Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we'll be discussing on the management of the ASA-6 patient for organ retrieval. Introduction Potential organ donors should be identified and discussed with a donor coordinator as demand for donor organs continue to exceed supply. Contraindications for organ donation occurring in the potential donor includes a transmissible infectious disease that will adversely affect the recipient such as CJD, HIV, active tuberculosis, HBV infection, West Nile virus infection, malaria, and encephalitis of unknown cause, recent malignancy, and clinical signs that indicate the organ is unlikely to function. A patient that has been declared brain dead cannot require anesthesia as they are dead. However, muscle relaxants may still be required to prevent spinal reflexes. The potential donor organs must be oxygenated and well perfused. Thus, hemodynamic manipulation may be required. The potential donor may be old, has a high BMI, may have intracranial hemorrhage, and may have multiple comorbidities. Pathophysiological changes during and after brain death. Shock. During the early phase, the onset of brain death is associated with a transient period of hypotension, increased cardiac index, and increased tissue perfusion. Vessoactive drugs administered to increase blood pressure during this period can cause rapid circulatory deterioration. Afterwards, a short-lived massive sympathetic outflow occurs due to brainstem herniation. Massive sympathetic outflow results in hypertension, tachycardia, myocardial dysfunction, impaired organ perfusion, tissue ischemia, and ischemia reperfusion injuries. During the late phase of shock, autonomic collapse and pituitary failure due to brain death results in reduced cardiac output, hypotension, and atropine-resistant bradycardia. If left untreated, circulatory collapse occurs. The timing of therapies to support hemodynamics is difficult as the catecholamine storm is followed quickly by pituitary failure. Lactic acidosis occurs due to shock as described above and reduced T3 and T4 and increased reverse T3 which is a biological inactive metabolite of tyroxine T4 formed by selective deiodination. This results in depletion of myocardial energy stores, myocardial dysfunction, and a global shift towards anaerobic metabolism. Respiratory failure occurs due to pre-existing pulmonary disease, neurogenic pulmonary edema, acute lung injury, etc. Hyperglycemia occurs due to reduced circulating insulin and increased insulin resistance. Neurogenic diabetes insipidus, hypovolemia, and electrolyte abnormalities occur due to reduced ADH secretion. Serum electrolyte abnormalities include hypernatremia, hypermagnesemia, hypokalemia, hypophosphatemia, and hypocalcemia. Coagulopathy occurs due to the release of tissue fibrinolytic agents and plasminogen activators from the necrotic brain. Hypothermia occurs due to loss of temperature regulation from hypothalamic dysfunction. Systemic inflammation and oxidant stress occurs. All these pathophysiological changes negatively impact donor organ function. During organ donation, donor organs are procured via long midline incision and median sternotomy. The procedure can last up to 6 hours depending on the organs chosen to be retrieved. Pain control is not applicable. Patient is typically positioned supine. Blood loss. Large fluid losses are likely. Cross-match 4 units of pack cells. Anesthetic technique is IPPV with CVP and outline. Pre-operative preparations. Confirm brain death and agreement to organ donation. Emphasis shifts from cerebral resuscitation to optimizing organ perfusion and oxygenation. Central venous access via the right internal jugular vein is preferred due to early ligation of the left innominate vein. Arterial line, left radial artery access is preferred due to early ligation of the right subclavian artery. Target physiological parameters for organ retrieval, CVP 4 to 10 mmHg but less than 6 mmHg for potential lung donors, MAP of 60 to 80 mmHg, PAOP of 10 to 15 mmHg, cardiac index of more than 2.2 to 2.5 liters per minute per meter square, 
urine output of 1 to 3 mils per kg per hour, HP of at least 10 grams per deciliter, and a hematocrit of 30%, SpO2 of more than 95% with the lowest FiO2 and PEEP, tidal volume of 6 to 8 mils per kg predicted body weight, PaCO2 of 34 to 41 mmHg, peak inspiratory pressure of less than 30 cmH2O, and core temperature of more than 35 degrees Celsius. Ensure adequate intravascular volume resuscitation, monitoring with continuous CVP, targets as mentioned above. Do replace urinary water and electrolyte losses, for example with glucose 4% and sodium chloride 0.18% with KCL. Regarding potential lung donors, avoid fluid overload. CVP of more than 6 mmHg results in increase in the AA oxygen gradient and reduction in the number of donor lungs that can be retrieved successfully. Order chest X-ray, ECG, echocardiography, and 4-hourly ABGs. For potential heart donors, pulmonary artery flotation catheter and transesophageal echocardiogram are often requested, especially in donors with high inotrope requirements. PAFC and TOE allows assessment of the cardiac structure and function and prevention of intravascular overload. Order chest X-ray, ECG, echocardiography, and 4-hourly ABGs as well. Characteristics of ideal donors The ideal heart donor should be less than 50 years old, hemodynamically stable, does not have major chest trauma, cardiac disease, active infection, prolonged cardiac arrest, malignancy, HIV or hepatitis, or intracardiac injections. The donor heart size should be within 20-30% to 30 of the recipient's heart size. The ideal lung donor should be less than 55 years old, ABO compatible, clear chest X-ray, no smoking history, mechanical ventilation of less than 5 days, PaO2 of more than 300 mmHg on FiO2-1 with a PEEP of 5 cmH2O, no chest trauma, aspiration or sepsis, negative sputum gram stain, and clear bronchoscopy. Ideal donor for recipients with pulmonary hypertension, younger donors, short ischemic time, low donor inotrope requirement and oversized organs. Human leukocyte antigen type and ABO blood group should be compatible. Ensure adequate mean arterial pressure. If hypotension persists despite fluid replacement, the first line vasopressor should be vasopressin. If desmopressin has been used to control diabetes insipidus, it should be changed to vasopressin ADH as it restores vascular tone and arterial pressure without a direct myocardial effect. Desmopressin may increase the risk of myocardial infarction due to arterial thrombosis. Ensure regular chest physiotherapy and suctioning. Correct hypernatremia, for example with dextrose 5%, aim for serum sodium of less than 155 millimoles per liter. Hypernatremia is associated with poor liver graft function. Correct coagulopathy with clotting factors and platelets. Hormone resuscitation. Hormone therapy may help stabilize donors hemodynamically and extend the donor pool once pituitary failure ensues. Protocols varies among transplant centers. Follow local retrieval team or in-house protocols. There is little deep research on hormone replacement therapy, thus clinical practice varies widely. Try iodotyronine, i.e. T3 or leotyronine, bolus, 4 mcg, infusion, 3 mcg per hour. Its action is to reverse myocardial dysfunction and reduce inotrope requirements. Vasopressin, also known as antidiuretic hormone. Bolus dose is 1 unit. Infusion is at 0.5 to 2 units per hour. Titrate to achieve MAP of more than 60 mmHg and SVR of 800 to 1200 dynes second per cm to the power of 5. Vasopressin acts to treat diabetes insipidus and restore vascular tone. Insulin sliding scale infusion should be initiated to maintain blood sugar of 6 to 9 millimoles per liter. Methylprednisolone. Bolus dose is 15 mg per kg. Infusion is optional. It acts by increasing oxygenation and reduce cytokine-mediated cellular injury and increases donor lung procurement. Anesthetic setup for organ procurement. Equipment and supplies. Ventilator as in ICU, bronchoscope, warming blankets, blood warmers and ice. Recheck items, declaration of death, 
cause of death, consent, and blood type. Prepare fluids such as lactated ringers and albumin. Prepare medications, vasopressors such as vasopressin, noradrenaline, dobutamine, phenylephrine, ephedrine, and dopamine. Antibiotics, neuromuscular blockers, heparin, corticosteroids as per procurement team, povidone iodine per nasogastric tube if pancreas is procured, NAC, insulin, mannitol and furosemide, and PGE1. Perioperative measures. Anesthetic management during organ procurement is guided by the needs of the procurement teams. They may come from several centers and may have discrepant requests depending on the organs procured. Standard monitoring should be employed, plus CVP, intra-arterial blood pressure monitoring, core temperature, urine output, and frequent analysis of ABGs, electrolytes, hematocrit, glucose, and clotting. IV access should be large bore, preferably at the right upper limb due to early ligation of the left innominate vein. Central venous line should be inserted via the right internal jugular vein due to early ligation of the left innominate vein. Fluid losses may be up to 8 liters. Replace fluid losses with crystalloid, colloid, or PAC cells. Keep hematocrit more than 30%. Target physiological parameters for organ retrieval. CVP of 4 to 10 mmHg or less than 6 mmHg for potential lung donors. MAP of 60 to 80 mmHg. PAOP of 10 to 15 mmHg. Cardiac index of more than 2.2 to 2.5 liters per minute per meter square. Urine output of 1 to 3 ml per kg per hour, HP of more than 10 g per deciliter, and hematocrit of more than 30%, SpO2 of more than 95% with lowest FiO2 and PIP, tidal volume of 6 to 8 ml per kg, PaCO2 of 34 to 41 mmHg, peak inspiratory pressure of less than 30 cmH2O, and core temperature of more than 35 degrees Celsius. The need for general anesthesia is controversial. Options to control reflex pressure responses during surgery includes providing isoflurane, achieving MAC1, fentanyl 5 to 7 micrograms per kg, labetalol, and GTN. To obtain reflex muscular contractions due to preserved spinal reflexes and to improve surgical access, administer cardio stable non depolarizing neuromuscular blockers such as pancuronium or vacuronium. Maintain hemodynamic stability. Large and frequent hemodynamic fluctuations occur due to compression of the IVC, manipulation of the adrenals, blood and fluid losses. Treat hypotension with colloid titrated to CVP, IVI vasopressin, and metaraminol. Lung protective ventilation is especially important for lung donors. Tidal volume of 6 to 8 ml per kg predicted body weight with PEEP adjusted to allow minimal FiO2. Bronchoscopy Surgeons will perform bronchoscopy prior to lung removal. The following may be requested. Glucocorticoids and epoprostenol. Epoprostenol may be needed for 10 minutes via the pulmonary artery if the lungs are to be harvested to improve circulation of the lung preservation solution. The dose is 5 to 20 nanograms per kg per minute. Broad-spectrum antibiotics should be administered as per local transplant protocol. Antibiotics can lower the risk of post-transplant infection. Full heparinization, 300 international unit per kg should be administered centrally prior to surgical cannulation of the major vessels. This is important because of the high incidence of pulmonary emboli found with organ retrieval. Manitol and loop diuretics may be required, for example just prior to collection of donor lungs. Withdrawal of PAFC and CVC should be done before the ligation of the SVC. Organ ischemic time is the amount of time that elapses when blood flow to an organ is interrupted. The time of aortic cross clamp should be noted as the beginning of organ ischemic time. Discontinuation of life support at the end. Discontinue mechanical ventilation. Discontinue monitoring. Remove the endotracheal tube after lung inflation and tracheal cross clamp. Abdominal surgical team continues to operate in circulatory arrest. Special considerations. Organ donor's family. Empathy and sensitivity should be practiced 
throughout the management of the potential organ donor in dealing with the donor's family. Quality of care that a multi-organ donor receives could affect the outcome of up to six recipients. If cardiac arrest occurs, CPR should be commenced. Procurement of the liver and kidneys can still proceed rapidly with cross-clamping of the aorta at the diaphragm and infusion of cold preservation solution into the distal aorta and portal vein. These are my references. Thank you.